the extensor carpi ulnaris runs just on the ulnar aspect of the ulnar head. This can become unstable and slip over the ulnar head causing pain. There can be tendinitis involved with that tendon sheath. To examine this, we supinate the forearm, extend the wrist, and ulnarly deviate the wrist. Resisted wrist extension and ulnar deviation while palpating along the extensor carpi ulnaris tendon here will elicit a painful response. Resist me. Right here will elicit a painful response. You can sometimes rotate the forearm while doing that and feel if the tendon slips over the ulnar head. And the bones will be drawn here with Lister's tubercle of the distal radius. The distal radius here the owner head here, we go a centimeter distal to Lister's tubercle, we'll have the scaphoid here, the lunate here, the triquetrum here. Remember the pisiform was sitting here, it's opposite the triquetrum. If you put your thumb or index finger on the piece of form underneath and the triquetrum above and you put your thumb on Lister's tubercle, go distal one centimeter and over one centimeter, you are now on the lunate. That delineates the lunotriquetral joint and you can blot one against the other to elicit pain. That might indicate a ligamentous injury at that level. Again, if you keep move over a centimeter, put your left thumb on the lunate and your right thumb on the scaphoid, we could translate the lunate against the scaphoid to see if there's instability or a ligamentous problem at that level as well. Here we have the radial styloid. The scaphoid runs at a 45 degree angle here. You could feel the distal pole of the scaphoid down at the base of the thumb, which is here. If you suspect a scaphoid fracture, you palpate in the anatomic snuff box, which is bounded by the first dorsal compartment and the third dorsal compartment. And in that level would be the waist of the scaphoid, where a fracture often occurs. The, there's a branch of the radial artery, which also passes through the snuff box, and you can take a pulse in that level. The median nerve runs in the carpal tunnel. The carpal tunnel just owner to the flexor carpi radialis. It runs from the distal flexion crease of the wrist to a line called Kaplan's cardinal line, which runs from the thumb index web space to the hook of the hamate, which is right here. We draw a line there and a line along the ring finger axis. We identify the carpal tunnel, which is bounded right in here. The carpal tunnel contains the median nerve and all the flexor tendons to the thumb and the lesser digits. A Tennell's test is simply palpating or tapping along the median nerve. If that's positive, the patient would complain of tingling or pain in the tips of their fingers. A carpal compression test is done by placing pressure over the median nerve while gently flexing the wrist and pushing. This pushes pressure on the median nerve a positive response would be for the patient if they complained of tingling or numbness, which was made worse by that maneuver. Similarly, the, the Guillaume's canal is bounded by the pisiform and the hamate and the volar carpal ligament. Through that runs the ulnar nerve and artery, and a tenels and a compression test can be performed over the ulnar nerve as well. That would elicit a response to the outside of the little finger or the owner side of the little finger, the radial side of the little finger, and the owner side of the ring finger, which would be the innervation of the ulnar nerve. The median nerve innervates the thumb, index, long, and radial half of the palmar side of the uh, ring finger. When looking for wrist instability, we do a Watson's scaphoid shift test, which tells us if there's any periscaphoid arthritis or scapholunate instability. 
To do this test, I put my thumb on the scaphoid tubercle right here. FCR runs up to it. I go from an ulnarly deviated to a radially deviated wrist, pushing dorsal on my tubercle. As I come, I release pressure on the scaphoid. If I feel a pop or a jolt, that might indicate that there's a scapholunate abnormality. Always check the other side, as patients can have a physiologic pop with that maneuver, which is, would be indicative of physiologic ligamentous laxity and would not indicate a pathological condition. Lickman's catch-up clunk test is a similar procedure where we go from radial to ulnar deviation, back and forth again, and you'll feel a clunk in the wrist as you do this. If you, if you sense that, you suspect mid-carpal instability or lunotriquetral intraosseous ligament injury. 